All right, so now we're going to talk about correlation. Now there are two different types of correlations. Right here is called the correlation coefficient. Now the correlation coefficient is commonly known as R. It's used to determine how close the relationship is to being perfect or no relationship. You can see here, this is negative 0.5, this is positive 0.5. And here are the graphs. A 1 has every single point on the line, whereas a negative 0.5, you can see a general trend downward, but it's very difficult to tell. Once you get to 0 or anything coming very close to 0, there's almost no correlation. At 0.5, once again, you see a general slant up, but there's a lot of points outside the line. And then a 1 is, once again, perfect. Now, with this, we actually classify it very carefully. If you are 1, you are perfect. But anything between 0.75 and very close to 1 is considered strong. Anything between 0.5 and 0 0.75 is considered fairly strong. Anything between 0.25 and 0.5, there is some relationship. And anything coming close to 0 to 0.25 is weak. Now at 0 exactly, there is no linear relationship or none. And the same is true of the negative side. So if you can get one side down, then you can get them all. And once again, this is how to classify correlation coefficient, meaning our R factor. Now with coefficient of determination, it is slightly different. Before you can use to predict values, you need to decide how well it actually fits the data. Now we know that if R fits between negative 1 and positive 1, then R squared would fit between 0 and positive 1. This is how we classify it. It's very simple. Anything above 50% is considered a good fit. And anything below 50% is considered a poor fit. Now, that's a little bit about teaching, but let's actually try it out. We're going to use the coefficient of determination. But in order to do this, we need to find the coefficient of correlation. Now, just like with all of our other problems, we need to put the data into the calculator. So in the top, we have x, and in the bottom, we have y. We get our calculator out, and in order to go where we need to, we hit mode, stat, and a plus bx, just like before. Our x's go first, 40, 42, 48, 55, 65, 79, 88, 100, and 120. To get back up to the top, you hit the down button. 150, 140, 160, 170, 150, 162, 185, 165, 190. <gasps> what did I do wrong? Where was my mistake? I never moved over. So let's go ahead and put the data in again. This happens, and don't be discouraged when it does. If this type of thing happens, just go back and correct your mistake and move on. 40, 42, 48, 55, 65, 79, 88, 100, and 120. We hit the down button, and we have to move over to go into Y. 150, 140, 160, 170, 150, 162, 185, 165, and 190. Now these match up perfectly so we know we've done it correctly. The first thing we have to find is our R. To do this, we go back to the main screen and just like when finding A and B, we're going to do the same steps. Shift, Stat, we go to Regression, and we choose number 3, R. R is 0 0.78. Now, on our line, that means, if we were to look at this, that 0 
is still a strong relationship. Okay? But now we need to do r squared. Just like when you did standard deviation and variation, all you have to do is hit this x squared button. And we get that r squared is 0 0.62. On our line, anything past 0 0.5 is considered a good fit. So this is a strong correlation with a good fit. But we are not done. You can see here how r 0 0.78 we squared and got 0 0.6117 or 0 0.62. What this means is 61% of the variation in manufacturing expenses is explained by the production volume. Alternatively, 39% of the variation is not explained by the production volume. What this does is this actually talks about how good of a fit, meaning on the points, there are some points that are not going to be explained. They're anomalies. However, 61% of the points will be explained.